Hi. I just want to thank you all for what you're doing at Core Christianity, answering the tough questions. And may God continue to bless you with wisdom. But my question is in regards to Ezekiel 38 to 39, where uh, the prophet writes about Gog of the land of Magog rising up along with Persia, Cush, and Put, I think a few other nations coming down to uh, come after Israel from the north. My question is, is, is Gog of the land of Magog considered a Russia? I know Persia is modern day Iran, but I just want to know what your thoughts. And also real quickly, is this Ukraine invasion possibly the lead way of that to come? Hmm. Uh, thank you again. Yeah, you know, I wondered if we would get uh, a question like this in light of everything that's going on, just because it is so um, heartbreaking. Why don't we take a, a moment first to uh, pray briefly about the, the situation going on in Ukraine, and then I'll get right to your question. Father, once again, um, today, we cry out to you, asking for you to bring peace, Lord God, an end to war. Uh, praying, Lord God, in particular for the conflict in Ukraine, um, praying for the, the protection of uh, those who are suffering, asking, Lord God, especially for your church in that area, Lord God, that you would grant them boldness, um, a sense of your presence, and, and even, Lord God, that somehow through these circumstances um, you would do as so often you've, you've done throughout <clears throat> history, Lord in continuing to advance your gospel. Um, and I pray that your church would rise up at this time uh, and meet the needs of those who are suffering, especially um, throughout Ukraine. And so would you please, Lord God, be with the people there? Um, would you grant peace? Would you grant your presence? In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, amen. there have been, um, I've seen this, uh, popular pastors and Bible teachers on television, on the radio, on Sunday mornings, who, you know, they see these events and they open up the scriptures in particular, the, you know, the prophetic literature, and they say, oh, I think this is what Ezekiel was talking about in Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel was prophesying about Russia and the invasion of Ukraine or the invasion of uh, Israel or an invasion of, of Israel. Let me just read the text because it's so important for us to, to just get into the word. It says, Ezekiel 38, verse 1, The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Tograma, from the uttermost parts of the north, with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. What you have here is a co uh, coalition of these seven nations that are coming against the people of God. It's a picture of the, the final battle, if you will, the end times war, where all the nations are gathered together uh, against the people of God to bring destruction uh, against them from, we read here, from the uttermost parts of the north. And so some, some people have said, well, see right there, you know, north of Israel, you have Turkey, you have Russia even further there. So this must be a prophecy about Russia. And people will even say, you know, in, in um, verse 2, it talks about Meshach and Tubal. Well, that sort of sounds like Moscow. Um, that would be is, is called an anachronism. We're sort of reading present day things back into the text. Really, um, Meshach and Tubal um, are probably a, a reference to peoples from East Anatolia. It would be modern day Turkey. Um, what we do have in this passage is a clear picture of this end times eschatological battle against the people of God. And, and it seems to be like this all-encompassing, not just Russia, but one of the reasons I, I think you have seven nations here is because there's this picture of fullness, the whole world, if you will, coming against Israel or the, the people of God there, as Ezekiel sees it specifically. 
Now, one of the really important, I, I think, principles of Bible interpretation, especially when we're thinking about Bible prophecy, is that we let Scripture interpret Scripture. And one of the places where what we see here in Ezekiel 38 is is talked about or commented on is in the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 and following. Listen closely to what Revelation 20 says. When the thousand years are ended, that is after the quote-unquote millennial reign of Christ, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog. So right here, you know, as John is, is prophesying, Gog and Magog aren't just, um, you know, isn't just a re- reference to Russia. This is a reference to the nations, all of them, right? Gog and Magog to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea, and they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and, this, and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the the beast and the false prophet were, and they were to be tormented day and night forever and ever. And so again, this is a picture of the final battle. Now, a couple of things, you know, throughout the history of, of the world, um, especially, you know, the last 2000 years, I think people have seen um, these wars that have happened around them. They've wanted to sort of read um, those experiences in light of what the Bible says. And so, you know, I, I understand that, but I, I think we have to be careful that we're Um, not twisting or misinterpreting Scripture and not just seeing what we want to see there. Yes, there is a final battle, a final war that is coming. Um, Is this invasion of Ukraine, you know, the the, the sort of beginning of that? Um, I don't think that that, that's what we would get from Ezekiel chapter 38. And in particular, I think the, the, the focus on Russia that so many people have, but Ezekiel 38, Revelation 20, it really is not just one nation. It's, it's the nations of the world gathered against the people of God. But here's what you need to know. Here's, I think, the, the, the comfort that you can have from the scriptures is you know who's over all of this? It's the Lord himself. In fact, in Ezekiel 38, In verse 16, we read, You will come up against my people, Israel, like a cloud covering the land. In the latter days, I will bring you against my land, that the nations may know me, when through you, O Gog, I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. Here's what you can't lose sight of, and so many people do when they think about Bible prophecy, when they think about the cataclysmic events happening around the world, wars, and, and, and so forth. You know, it's so easy to be discouraged, to be afraid. Here's what you need to understand. God is on his throne. Even that final eschatological end times battle is not something that's outside of his hands. And he's the one who's orchestrating everything somehow by his sovereign providence. For what purpose? So that the nations might know his power to vindicate his holiness before their eyes. And so here's what I want you to know. If you're worried about these things, if if you're struggling, you see these things, Know that the Lord is on his throne, and our job right now is to love those who are in need and to seek to to support them in whatever ways that we can, especially those who are suffering through prayer. Um, through through any number of women supporting missions agencies that are that are out there uh, seeking to provide humanitarian relief, those kinds of things. And those are really good things. And so I just want to encourage you because, like I said, a lot of people will take these verses in light of the things that are happening. And they'll just have this sort of doomsday um, perspective about everything. And it creates a lot of fear and concern. Uh, And oftentimes it's not really the right approach to these passages. And so appreciate your question and may God bless you and uh, be with you and, and be with the people who are suffering right now in Ukraine.